Hey, Chris Lipe here. Many of you have recommended this artist and particularly this video based on all the joy I have gotten out of experiencing a doze music lately. Amir, I think that's right. I couldn't find a direct pronunciation. Please correct me on if I'm saying that wrong. The first take. Let's see what we got and what sorts of inspirations come about. Ooh. Okay. Okay, I want to go back before we get too far into this and just make a few observations. First of all, I love the nature of these The First Take videos. The rawness, the acoustic instruments, super fun. You can tell she has a fantastic command over the dynamics in her voice, even though this isn't an incredibly dynamic part of the song. Even in those first few notes, you hear lots of different dynamics happening. Listen again. Of course, I'm exaggerating to make a point, but she goes from a heavier sound to a lighter sound as she's making that ascent with her range. A less experienced, seasoned, and interesting vocalist would just go, ta ta not be attentive to the dynamics at all. She's probably not thinking about dynamics as she's singing this, but how she's practiced and how she's experienced her voice up till this recording has helped her create this level of dynamic awareness without even thinking about dynamics. I know that sounds weird, but it's so true. If you're interested in singing and would like to develop more character and freedom in your own vocals, click the link below and join my free singing course, and I'll help you develop the fundamentals necessary to be truly expressive with your singing. <laughs> being pretty up there in terms of energy. You can hear that brasher, uh, more belted yeah, sound. But listen right before it. She has a lot of contrast here. This is what makes her voice so interesting and like draws you in from the very first few notes. There's so much going on. Yeah, she gets raspy. Dumps a little bit more air when she's lower. That's a fun and interesting characteristic. She has a very seamless transition between her head voice and chest voice. Listen there, she's hitting the same note in chest voice and then hits it again in head voice, but it's still very well supported. You can tell she's making these choices to further that variety in the performance, not because she has to hit that note in head voice. So we have that chest voice, thicker, weightier note, yeah, on that note, and then ah, over a different vowel, she's unapologetically head voice. They sound great. They sound very different.
I love how her voice tends to go from this husky, bigger sound to brighter and playful. I don't think I've heard that in many voices. It's it's more than just her facial posture uh, or how she's shaping her vowels. There's a lot going on from an airflow management perspective too that's allowing her to be have this sort of power and authority in her lower range. Really compelling. Beautiful. Love that halftime quality that the music adopts there, allowing her to float over it with the faster rhythms vocally. And notice what she's doing with her vocal rhythms. It's easy when a band goes to halftime to <laughs> rush as a vocalist over that. But she's pulling back the rhythm in a in a very professional way there. There's that snare. She's letting that held back snare because of that halftime groove still lead her through. And then she's going to go more on the front of the beat like she was earlier when the band was also pushing their pocket a bit more. These are the subtle aspects of an incredible vocal performance that many people don't notice. The massive rangy notes and the screams and really quirky stuff gets noticed, obviously, because it's so much more in your face. But simply being attentive to how your voice is laying over and interacting with the groove and the music, that's a really difficult thing to get right. And you really only notice it if someone's doing it really wrong. But in this case, because of that halftime occurrence in the music, you really get a sense of like, oh, she could either really make this awkward or it could be really awesome. She's making it awesome. Right? That was cool. Notice how she played with her resonance, her placement there. It was really forward and then back, resonating more around the soft palate area, as opposed to just always up here. You know, another reason I really like these types of performances is because it's all about the music. Don't get me wrong. I love live shows and pyrotechnics and costumes and great music videos with awesome storylines and production. I love all that stuff. But the fact that none of the instrumentalists or the vocalist, they don't have to be attentive to any of that stuff. It's all about the take. It's all about the, the performance from a musical standpoint. None of this other stuff matters. And so they're, they're in, able to sort of go inside themselves and really experience their voice or their playing without having to worry about engaging the audience. Like they're engaging the audience by default because of how they're experiencing their own craft. It's, it's a different genre, but I really appreciate it. Ooh. That was cool. Really bringing out her vocal break there.
<laughs> Most vocalists are scared to death of their vocal break and try to avoid it at all costs or blend it. She does a good job of blending it in other places, but that was cool. It was uh, an intentional use of that passaggio. Uh, bridging! Very cool. Again there, and she even went way down in in uh, in timbre there. <laughs> Experiment with some of this stuff in your own voice. If you sing, and you will free all sorts of things. You'll expand your range. You'll be way more playful with your voice and free of tension if you're willing to go there with your voice. The way she brought her timbre down, lowered her larynx there for just a second, and brought the pitch down even more than the target note she was going for, and then let it abandon up like that was really cool. Listening again. That was cool sounding. A little bit of a growl. Just a little bit. Cool. Wow. Solid performance and full of all kinds of variety. Thank you so much for this recommendation. There's a lot we can learn from watching a performance like this and internalizing some of the things that she does in her voice in our voice. And again, if you'd like more help doing that with your voice, click that link below and join my free course. I think the number one thing we can all take away from this performance is that variety can be subtle. And sometimes when it's subtle and it just aids the overall feel you get when you're listening, that type of variety is sometimes the most important way we can use our voice to artfully communicate. If you like this video, you'll love some of the videos I've done on Addo and Taka from 1OK Rock.